Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma bada habata fila assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty accepts our good and forgives our evil, protects us from kulisu wa makru, blesses us with ikhlas, with thabad ala sunnah, ala sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ahabati fillah, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, la darar wa la dirar. There is no harm and there is no reciprocating harm. And that applies for any and all forms of darar, all forms of harm that the Muslim should be ever vigilant in his or her life in safeguarding the rights of others and not harming others and not being oppressive towards others. And so this brings to light and this highlights the importance for us as Muslim men to safeguard the rights and the honor and respect of the Muslim women. And I'm talking about those who are husbands, who have a wife or wives that from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and from the sunnah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is to be kind and ge ge generous and respectful uh, of towards the women, towards our wives. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Arijal Nisa that men are the maintainers and protectors of the women. That means some of the hukuk that we have as men is that we are to protect and we are to maintain, protect them in their deen, protect them physically, protect them uh, spiritually, and in with everything good. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, to, to treat them with ma'roof, treat and be kind and gentle and respect, respectful to your wives and your women folk with goodness and kindness and gentleness. The men are the maintainers and protectors of the women. So how is it as a Muslim man that we could fail to do those duties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has entrusted us with? It's part of what your Lord has commanded you to do, so then it's an act of ibadah. When you take care and you spend on your family, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And from what we provided them, they spend. That is the, that is a sifa, min sifatul mu'mineen. That is a trait from the traits of the believers is that they spend in that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. Allah is the one who's given them risk, given you a job, given you earnings, given you the ability to earn, so you must spend it in His cause and on those whom He has entrusted you with. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, which means, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِ وَأَنَا خَيْرُ وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِ the Prophet Muhammad said, The best of you are those who are best to their wives or to their families. And I am the best of you to my wives. So that means when a man is in a situation where he has one wife, he should treat her with the, as, as the best. And when a man has two wives, he should treat them with justice and treat them with honor and respect and not cause more jealousy and enmity between them. And when a man has three wives or four wives, likewise, dividing his time and being just and kind and respectful and looking out for their deen and their dunya. And that's why from those duties is to spend. So we cannot leave our wives to the state especially in non-Muslim countries, we cannot say, well, you need to take welfare. You need to take the dole. You need to take this in Sweden. You need to take this in whatever country. La. Our job as men, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar-rijal qawimun al nisa And that's one of the reasons Allah has, bit, has, has blessed us with being the leaders of our communities and the leaders of our household. So the Muslim man 
has an immense responsibility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to his families. And if he wants to practice a sunnah, bell, it's wajib, it's an obligation upon him to practice the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu He must be kind and gentle and respectful and uh, affectionate and trying to give the right to his women folk as well as he has rights. But the scope of our discussion today is to talk about the men and those men who are falling worse than short in those duties. Because all of us make taqsir. All of us have mistakes. The Prophet ﷺ said, All the children of Adam commit sins. And the best of those who sin are those who repent. And the Prophet ﷺ said, There's no harm and there's no reciprocating harm. So, we should never be a source of harm, whether that be physical, mental, or spiritual. Rather, we relax. We should be the people of safety for our families, and our families a comfort and safety for us. The Prophet والسلام, was the best to his wives. So why is it that there are Muslim men who beat their women? Why are there Muslim men who curse their women? Why are there Muslim women men who... Uh, destroy the deen of their women. Some of the men are so ashamed of their own Islam, they don't want their women to cover. No, 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 no more hijab. Don't wear this color hijab. Don't do it like this, because you might resemble the believing women. That's not what they say. But that is their actions, because they want to assimilate. But as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to Believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is further evidence to show that we should be kind and gentle and respectful and have the best of manners? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَتْقُلُ فِي مِيزَانُ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَ مِنْ عُسْنُ الْخُلْقِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِذُ الْفَاهِشَ الْبَذِيرِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believer on the day of judgment and verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech so watch your speech watch the sins watch wickedness and have the best of deeds because the best there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale on the day of judgment than husnul khuk than good righteous conduct and from the good righteous conduct is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost and the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned in the hadith of Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Mu'ad, atadri ma haqa Allah al ibadi wa ma haqa li ibadi ala Allah? He said, O Mu'ad, do you know the right of Allah upon his servants and the right of the servants upon Allah? Qala Allah wa Rasulu alam. Or kultu Allah wa Rasulu alam. He said, Allah and his messenger know best. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, Haq Allah al ibadin ya'budu wa la yushriku bi shayn. The right of Allah upon his servants is that he worships him or they worship him alone and do not associate partners with him. So giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right is the highest thing. And that's a part of husn khulq That's the best of the best of manners because it has to do with the right and the manners of Allah that you deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Likewise, fitting under that is following the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being righteous, respectful with the women. So for the Muslim man, he shouldn't be unjust and a tyrant. And the Muslim man should not be oppressive. The Prophet sallallahu said, Iyakum uh, Beware of uh, vulm, oppression. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us the best of examples that we should be respectful. The Prophet ﷺ was asked, what is the thing that was heavier, uh, uh, that, that will get a person into paradise the easiest or the quickest? He said, fearing Allah and good manners. Again, being good manners in general with the creation and from the creation is your spouse. And then the Prophet was asked, what is the thing that, that brings the people into the hellfire the most? He said, the fem, the mouth, and the private part. So 
doing the haram with your private parts, cursing, lying, backbiting, uh, spreading wicked tales, spreading wicked tales and lies about your own spouse. Just think how alim that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's upon us to fear Allah tabarak wa ta'ala as much as possible. Ya iladina amin wa taqullaha haqqa taqati wa la tamutunna ilwa anta muslimun. Ya iya wa nasa taqarubbukum aladhi khalakukum min nafsin wahida. Wa khalaka minha zawjaha wa batha minhum a rijalan kathira wa nisa'a wa taqullaha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us with taqwa all throughout the Quran. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he created us min nafsin wahida. From a single soul. Wa khalaka minha zawjaha. And then he created from it uh, the, the spouse. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always commanding us to fear him. So fear your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala by honoring the rights of your spouses. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty to forgive us all of our many shortcomings. Bless us all with ikhlas with thabat. Help us all to be better slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do our duties to our women folk because the women folk are the foundation of the Muslim family, the foundation of the Muslim community, the foundation of the Muslim ummah. And we don't even need to bridge those details for us to understand. I think anyone with an aql, with an intellect, can understand those relationships. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, protect us from kulisu wa makru. Subhanaka la humma wa bihamdika. Shadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.